it does provide a unique perspective of the views. The last piece to the puzzle of boondocking is there's no dump station. So friends, we are back here. It's uh, our campsite here in the Tuscarora State Forest. We've got the generator going back over there. The batteries, when we came back, they were full according to the gauge whenever we left. And then we came back and it said two-thirds. It was kind of bouncing between two-thirds and one-third on the gauge, depending on whether the refrigerator compressor was running. So definitely, I, I don't know what it actually is. You know, if the, when the compressor's running, it says one-third. So are we actually at one-third or are we actually at two-thirds, like it says once it shuts back off. So, irregardless, wanted to top them off before night. Plus that, uh, we're running the generator now while we're showering and stuff. That way the noise is less obtrusive. It's kind of drowned out by the water pump. So, you know, you got to listen to one or the other. So why not both? When the, when all that stuff's not on though, I'll tell you, it is amazing how quiet this boondocking spot is. I could really get used to that. Rachel and Sarah are working on getting a fire going. What are we doing? Other than starting a fire? Yeah. I'm just trying to get a fire going because he's picky about what kind of fire he has when he cooks over it. And we're having bossy tonight, so. Oops. I lost my piece. So hopefully we can get a good fire going here. Hopefully we can keep William away from the fire. Well, that'll be the trick. Mommy, I gave William one of our fire sticks. Okay. <coughs> That's where we're at for now. Uh, we're going to have a fire. Maybe if it's a clear night, we'll get some pictures of stars or something. Yeah, it got cloudy last night. It was cloudy last night, yeah. Uh, then tomorrow morning, we are going to do some hiking around here. So, you know, don't leave just yet. We might have some interesting stuff to show you in the morning. There are a lot of hiking trails around here, so we are going to see what some of them look like. Well, friends, it's, I don't know, close to dinner time, six o'clock-ish here at the campsite. Willie and I are working on some kibasi over the fire. We've had to improvise a little bit. I have um, a thing that's supposed to hold the kibasi stick, but um, these fire rings here at the State Forest Campsite, as you can maybe see, they're considerably taller than state parks and a lot of the other private campgrounds that we've stayed at. So the holder isn't high enough, moral of the story. So I've got, I'm using the grate and a log and another log to try to, you know, get it at the right height because, because we don't want it to burn. But I know we've talked about this quite a lot. It's my favorite meal for camping. Over here, Rachel's got some mac and cheese going and baked beans. It's just Kraft macaroni and cheese. It's nothing fancy. No, I'm sorry. It's Paw Patrol, so it is a little fancy. Paw Patrol. That's the best kind of mac and cheese. When you turn it into some weird shape, it makes it taste better. The kibasi though, that they're having, it's got the American cheese stuffed in it. That's the good stuff. So that that is fancy. Will's wanting his food, so I'm going to put the camera down and get him in his high chair because Otherwise, he's going to get rather angry if we don't feed him here shortly. Well, friends, good morning here from Tuscarora State Forest. One of my favorite things camping, be it state parks or a boondocking situation like this, is when you can walk straight from your site without driving anywhere and go for a hike. So that's what we're going to do this morning. We're going to take you down past where the CCC fountain is and there are some short hiking trails over here it's a beautiful sunday morning we didn't even have to run the furnace last night because it's so hot it's got to be like in the 70 degree degree range here this morning which is crazy for november so we've been really enjoying this site though uh really no complaints but there's there's a good bit of traffic on this road a car is coming right now yeah friends the only downside to this road here is there is a good bit of traffic you wouldn't 
you wouldn't think that there would be but there's a good many cabins down this way and then I'm sure there's more up top and there's also more uh, DCNR campsites uh, back the road that way some of them are tent sites only and um, I'm not sure if there's actually any up there that allow trailer camping or RV camping all right well we're gonna go down here and pick a trail and I'll let you know what we find Friends, we are out here on the Licking Creek Trail. Uh, just trying to explore and see what else is in this area. One thing though, I do want to emphasize, I shouldn't have to, but it seems, seems like it's rather a problem in this area. When it comes to boondocking, when it comes to hiking, when it comes to anything state forest related, or just anywhere in life in general, you gotta stop littering. There's a ton of just stuff strewn about it's really quite disgusting especially around here you know I don't, I don't know what to say but we are definitely packing out everything that we have brought with us to our campsite and anything we take on the trails with us we take it home and we throw it out in the trash uh, so that it can be disposed of properly or recycled and what's crazy is most of the stuff you see laying around here is things that should be recycled so the fact that it's out here as opposed to being reused is even worse so let's be better about that as a society uh, if we want to be environmentalists and conservationists and all this stuff that people want let's start with the simple things and keeping our forests clean and free from trash and litter and that's all i have to say about that So far friends this is a very pretty walk down here by the Licking Creek and uh, show you behind me you can see this is a beautiful hemlock forest or hemlock grove and as we've talked about hemlocks provide a very unique environment it's cooler in here for sure you can tell because of the shade from the hemlocks as we've seen in other places, they provide just a very unique ecosystem. And uh, the hemlocks are a truly special tree, and it's a truly magical place when you're in these kinds of forests. So friends, I'd like to know, someone hopefully who follows the channel might be able to help me understand the language of blazes. Now I'm guessing that the three blazes mean there's three different directions you can go. One that way, the Licking Creek then goes behind us back to the road, which is where we just went, and then uh, across the river is your third way. So I'm guessing, guessing that that's what that means, but if someone could uh, explain that better to me, that would be helpful, because we have seen some other trees with two of them, which I'm not sure what that means. But uh, yeah, and in this particular instance, in this particular instance, fording the creek is the only option, so so that's what we got to do one way or another here. The best way I found to get across the river here, because I don't have high boots on, Rachel has Crocs, so she just walked through the stream, but walking across the log. But uh, your best, best uh, bet is probably to wear some taller hiking boots that are waterproof, or Crocs, or take your shoes off. Those are your options. I'm going to figure out a way to get Sarah across, but i got to get the camera to Rachel so I don't drop it in the creek because that would be bad. And 
and it's nice the logs even supported in the center so I mean I guess it is kind of a bridge in one way or another uh, I don't really know how far we're going or what we're attempting to do here but um, just kind of exploring without trying to get lost so the the blazes I mean the trail is well marked which is a big plus there do you want to hold my hand and uh, and I do have a map. Yes, sir. I don't think this is a good way back to the road. Hmm. Uh, but yeah, the trail is heavily marked, but it is not heavily traveled, or at least in the fall, you you can't really see where people walk because of the amount of leaves. But uh, there's a ton of leaves. I mean, we're really trudging through them here. So here's another three-way intersection. So I'm guessing my reading of blazes is correct. If you continue down that way, that'll be the Licking Creek Trail. Uh, we're not really interested in doing something really quite that long today. Um, but there is a loop you can do if you go down that way and it'll bring you back around to where we're headed. This here, I believe, is the County Line Trail. And so it should take us up and then right back to the campsite. So. That's the plan anyway. We're gonna keep trudging through the leaves here and see where we get. Friends, as you can kind of see around me, this is some freshly timbered out property. Which doesn't do a whole lot for visual excitement, but it does give you a nice view of the mountains behind me. And uh, I guess these are all white pines that, that they've left standing here. So. And then all the uh, fallen brush and stuff will be a good habitat for some wildlife going forward. So, And uh, not really sure exactly where the trail goes, um, but it is still well marked, so we'll just keep following it. Friends, as much as I don't like the view of the destruction of freshly cut timbered land, which we have stumbled across once before while hiking it up at Blue Knob, uh, it does provide a unique perspective of the views, as you can see around me, that otherwise you just wouldn't be able to see. If this was a dense forest, you would not be able to see the views of the mountains behind me and it would be an entirely different scene. So it, 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 it does have its pluses. You gotta take everything the way it comes and you know, this is the way that this is here today. Uh, should mention, we're not wearing orange today because it is Sunday and uh, some Sundays in Pennsylvania you are allowed to hunt. However, this one you are not. Friends, the terrain here in Rocksylvania is rather difficult to navigate under the best of circumstances. And uh, the logging you see behind me has, has really made it difficult. Uh, the trail is well marked through the area that's logged. However, the trail path is, the trail path is, is kind of blurry. Um, I have tried to move some stuff out of the way. But it's, it's going to need a little bit of time and work to sell, settle her back in. But, I mean, you can do it. But we are headed though, uh, the Licking Creek Trail ends here and the county line trail is 200 feet that way according to this sign and that should take us right back to our campsite and of course everything that has gone up must go down so it certainly should be easier, hopefully, uh, to get back to the site from here. This trail here, this uh, Black Log Mountain Road, uh, 2.3 miles that way will take you down to the end of the road where uh, the road that comes up to our campsite it's like Licking Creek Road and um, there's like a turkey foot looking intersection down that way and uh, the trail that we're currently on is the wire fence hollow trail so hopefully we have a better experience going down but the view from up here is is pretty phenomenal if you you know 
Photoshop out the the logging destruction. So friends, I believe I have totally misjudged the scale on the map about how far we'd be walking. So we're caught a little bit unprepared. It's also ridiculously hot and humid. I know it's November, but it's 70 degrees and I have no idea what the humidity is. But, I mean, we're all sweating to death. And, uh, this would be a great hike to do if you were looking for wildlife. However, we have absolutely everything working against us when it comes to finding, you know, some deer and stuff in the woods. The amount of leaf litter is incredible. This year has been a really good year for leaves for whatever reason. You know, even at home and at work and stuff, the amount of leaf material that has fallen this year out of the trees is just... It's a lot. So as you're walking, I'm sure you can hear hear the leaves moving in my feet. They're dry, and you, in a lot of these places, we are having to kind of kick them out of our way to to get our footing. Uh, none of us have. Well, Sarah does, but we don't have the right shoes on. And uh, of course, we've got the two dogs with us, and uh, as much noise as they're making. You know, it almost negates the amount of noise that the children make. So, so we're not going to see wildlife. It is a fairly scenic hike. It is, it is definitely typical Pennsylvania mountainside. Uh, you know, very reminiscent of every place that I've been, you know, hunting throughout my entire life, or at least in, you know, South Central Pennsylvania. Um, now, of course, when you get up north. The terrain does change once you get like above 80 uh, where it's all you know the different features formed by glaciers but down here this is you know this is typically what you get in south central Pennsylvania very easy going up for a little bit and then you'll reach like a shelf and it'll be a little bit rocky below the shelf and then it gets as you go up just all rock big rock um, and so, you know, that's generally every mountain in this region, that's how it is. But again, I misjudged the map terribly. But, uh, it's a fairly scenic hike nonetheless. And as long as the breeze is blowing, it's not too bad as far as it kind of gets the humidity out. But we should be getting back to Licking Creek here shortly. last thing I do want to mention to you is the last piece to the puzzle of boondocking is there's no dump station at the uh, at the campsites so you've got to have a place where you can dump there are lots and lots and lots of options as it relates to that you know we can do it here at home we can dump it into the sewer clean out but um, state park dump stations you can use for a small fee of course that adds to the cost but there are options and I just wanted to let you know that.